Welcome to another Patho video. Today let's talk about H. pylori gastritis, a chronic inflammatory disease of the antrum and body of the stomach caused by the bacteria Helicobacter pylori. Helicobacter pylori is a gram-negative rod with four to six flagella that allow it to propel through the mucus of the GI tract. It infects the mucus secreting cells of the stomach and duodenum. Transmission is believed to be from person to person by saliva or by water or food that has been contaminated by feces. Barry Marshall and Robin Warren first identified H. pylori in 1982. Their research established the link between H. pylori infection, gastritis, and peptic ulcer disease. Due to their work, we now know that peptic ulcers are caused by H. pylori and not spicy foods or stress. During their early research efforts, Barry Marshall was becoming frustrated with the negative response to his work and decided to drink a solution of H. pylori to prove his point. He became quite ill and the press got a hold of the incident and printed a newspaper story entitled Guinea Pig Doctor Discovers New Cure for Ulcers and the Cause. Later in 2005, Marshall and Warren received the Nobel Prize in Medicine for their pioneer work in discovering the true cause of ulcers. H. pylori is able to use its flagella to move through the more acidic gastric fluid through the mucus to the underlying epithelial cells where the pH is less acidic. Once H. pylori gains access to the epithelial cells, it uses adhesins that allow it to attach to the gastric epithelial cells. Two such adhesins are BAB-A and SAB-A. BAB-A and SAB-A respectively bind to Lewis B and Sialyl Lewis X expressed on the surface of epithelial cells of the gastric mucosa. As mentioned, H. pylori will motate away from the areas of the lowest pH. It will also produce an enzyme called urease, which will metabolize urea into carbon dioxide and ammonia, which is basic, and will take on a hydrogen to neutralize the acid in the immediate surroundings of the bacteria. This higher pH creates an environment where the bacteria can more readily proliferate. Some of the bacteria even enter the epithelial cells. Several substances are produced by H. pylori that cause damage to the gastric epithelial lining and leads to ulcers. Ammonia, mucinase, and protease are toxic to epithelial cells. Vacuolating cytotoxin A or VAC-A disrupts tight junction and causes apoptosis. Cytotoxin-associated gene or CAGA is a carcinogen and causes inflammation. Altogether, these toxic substances damage and kill epithelial cells, causing a crater and bleeding ulcer. One way to help prevent an H. pylori infection is to increase the intake of cruciferous vegetables, such as Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, and you guessed it, broccoli. 
Raise your hand if you love the taste of cruciferous vegetables. Many people don't really like the taste. H. pylori doesn't really like it either. One of the ways to diagnose H. pylori is by using the carbon urea breath test. For this test, the patient first drinks radio-labeled carbon-13 urea. The H. pylori in the digestive tract will then break down the urea using urease, break it down into carbon dioxide that now has carbon-13 as the carbon atom for the CO2 molecule. This breathed-off radio-labeled CO2 can be detected using special breath analyzers. Other diagnostic methods include measuring the blood for antibodies against H. pylori. Also, the urine or stool can be tested for H. pylori antigens. The most accurate diagnostic method is to take a biopsy from two sites and then culture the potential microbes or do a urease test on the biopsy specimen. And finally, treatment for H. pylori. A common treatment is to use PrevPak, which contains two antibiotics to kill the H. pylori and a proton pump inhibitor to decrease acid production so the ulcer can heal. If bismuth is added, then it's known as quadruple therapy. Bismuth can prevent binding of the bacteria to epithelial cells and also can cause lysis of H. pylori. As always, thanks for watching.